Hey, my name is Matt. I'm not sure why I'm making this. Um, for some reason, I feel compelled to make this video series on CAD from scratch. Uh, I know a lot of people who are really good at CAD, and I get a lot of people who are really good at programming things uh, from scratch, but not too many are good at both. I think I'm decent at both, and so I wanted to take this on as a little project. So what I want to do is I want to make a bunch of CAD utilities. What is CAD? CAD stands for Computer Aided Design. So I want to make a bunch of um, tools that can be used to turn ideas into some kind of physical product. So either from a 3D printer, water jet, some kind of fab shop, or just design in general. Um, I want to make black box basically. And now a lot of tools exist for this already. I made a little tier list here. These are all the ones that I've used in the past. This is most of them, most of the big names at least. Uh, Abacus, SolidWorks, 360, Katia, NX, FreeCAD. Um, obviously, I think most of them are absolute garbage tier. Why I put them down here. Um, Abacus has always had a special place in my heart. It's not really a CAD tool as much as these guys are, but it has some bare bones CAD utilities in there. And... Um, it's mostly for structural analysis, but it's got some, you know, no bells and whistles added, you know, programmatic CAD tools that are really, really good. And I think they're better than all these, you know, combined. So I've always liked Abacus. Um, the problem with Abacus is that it, it's super expensive. Um, you can get a cracked version. I don't advocate that, but you can. But I, I will say Abacus is not for poor people with, uh, with ethics. So... What I want to do is make some, you know, DIY versions of those tools that are kind of like B tier, give or take, that can do some of the same stuff Abacus can, better than these guys down here, but um, you know, not as professional as as Abacus and things like that. So also, you know, FreeCAD. I will say FreeCAD is open source and free, whereas the rest of them are, you know, proprietary and and quite expensive sometimes. Um, we were making tools that are obviously free, but then public domain. So one, one step above uh, FreeCAD in terms of freedoms. And so in this video, I want to talk about introduction, which I just did, and then also some of the basics of STL. STL is a file type that you'll see a lot in 3D printing and other kinds of, of CAD work. It's just, it, it encodes geometries, basically. Here I have um, the Wikipedia page. It's stereo lithography, that's what STL stands for, or no, it doesn't, it stands for standard triangle language. <laughs> and um, basically, it, there's two kind of versions, there's ASCII, which is text, and then there's binary, which is numbers. And we will encode, for the time being, just some ASCII, uh, we'll encode some, some basic geometry and you know encode, and, and we'll see how it works. Um, and to do, do that, I came up with this kind of very simple model. It's a, it's a house. It's got a one by one cube on the bottom and then a half inch tall pyramid on top, total of nine nodes, zero through eight. And the node zero is at the origin over here. So um, I guess we'll just try to code this up and we'll start from there. That'll be the first video is coding up this uh, pretty simple model. And this basically sets the stage for doing more advanced things um, from scratch as well. I mean, if you can encode this geometry from scratch, you can encode many geometries. I mean. The average thing that people print is not very complicated. You know, you might print out a clip, you might print out a box, print out a, a, a hook or a stand. You know, things that people print are not too advanced. So this is not, you know, out of the ordinary. So I guess we'll get started. Um, I got an empty directory here. We'll do everything in C. Why? Because I think C is better. So because we're going to be writing a um, uh, an STL file will have to include STIO. Now we'll need a, uh, a main function. In the main function we will, basically the first thing we'll do is we'll just encode the geometry. So we'll need a double to encode the actual node. So what I want to do is I want to have an array of nodes. There's nine nodes, each with three coordinates. And then there's, for triangles, I'll use an int array. I think there are 14 triangles, right? There's two triangles for every square face, right? That's not very neat. Yeah, 
every square face has two triangles. I guess we'll do this one. Yeah. And then on top, the four triangles. So it's 14 triangles. And there's, again, there's, there's three corners per triangle. And um, I guess we'll start there. So for the nodes, uh, node zero is at zero, zero, zero. Node one is at one, zero, zero. Node two is at one, one, zero. And node three is at zero, one, zero. Then nodes four through seven are at the same coordinates, only up one level, so one for the z value. And then coordinate number eight is at 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 1 1.5. Yep. And that's why we had to do um, double, by the way, because we have some non integer values. Now, for the triangles themselves, basically what I want to do is I want to code which vertices are in which triangles. So the first triangle here I'll say is the triangle 0, 1, 5. Then we have a triangle 0, 5, 4. And then we have triangle 1, 2, 6. Then we have triangle 1, 6, 5. Two three seven two seven six uh, three zero four uh, three four seven. Now we're on the the roof. Four five eight five six eight. Not a very fast typer. Six seven eight. And then seven four eight. Okay. Now we'll have to define. Oh no! I guess what we'll do is we'll just write a um, STL now. We now that we have everything defined, we'll write an STL. We'll pass in the number of nodes. We'll pass in the number of triangles. We'll pass in the actual arrays themselves, nodes and triangles, and we'll pass in a file name. Uh, so. That's going to be a car star file name. And I guess we'll name the file house STL. It looks like a pretty good house to me. And we'll, we'll pass in uh, the address of that array. And we'll return zero. So that's, that's our main function. Now we'll have to write the actual um, write STL function. So we'll have an int for number of nodes, int for number of triangles. Uh, we'll have to do it. I think it's like this, right? Double nodes three, and then int tri triangles three, I think. And then it's going to be file name. I'll return nothing, it's a void. And so I guess we'll get started. So first thing we'll do to write the STL is we'll open a file. So we'll say file f equals f open and then we'll pass in the file name. And then we'll pass in this W. That means we're going to write to that file name. Um, now we have to look at the actual um, format here. So an ASCII SDL, let me zoom in, starts off with the word solid, then a name. I think the word name is optional. Yeah. You can omit the, the word name if you have a space. So this is how you print to a file. You do F print, F. We'll print out solid. Oops. In, in quotes, solid, uh, space, and then we'll look at new line. And then at the very end of the file, we'll put end solid. 
So basically, that's the first line and the last line of the, of the ASCII STL done. Now you have to do the inside parts. So once we have our solid, we have to go through the faces of the triangle. So to do that, we have to iterate through the uh, number of triangles. So we'll say 4 int i equals 0, i less than num triangles, i plus plus. Now in the, for each triangle, basically, we'll first need a normal, a normal vector. So a normal is pretty simple. We could have quoted it manually. So basically each of these triangles here, for example, this triangle here, the normal should be pointing outwards. To get that vector, what we'll do is we'll take the vector from zero to one and the vector from zero to five get a cross product of those, and that should give us this vector here, this outward vector for every triangle. We could program it manually, it's not too hard, but or we, I mean, we could write it down manually, but it's not too hard to, to program. So we'll make an actual function for this. We'll say, uh, get normal. We'll pass in the coordinates of points zero, one, and five, or in general, it'll just be point one, point two, and point three. So we'll say double point one, size three, double point two, size three, double uh, point three, size three, and then we'll pass in a, an output array as well. Say so double normal size three, size three, I say. Um, good. Again, you return nothing. So we'll define the two vectors. So basically we, we just passed in location of point zero, point one, and point five on this triangle. We don't have a vector though, so we'll have to define a vector. We'll say double v1 size three will equal um, p2 zero minus p1 zero. We'll copy that three times. So this is basically subtracting the the. Um, x, y, and z coordinates of point one and two. We'll do the same thing with points uh, one and three, so just changing the three to, a, to two to a three, I should say. Point three, point three, point three. This should be a two. And this should be called the vector two. Now a cross product, basically what a cross product is is just the um, multiplication of the terms not on that axis Subtract it if that makes any sense. You can look up what a cross product is. I'll just define it um, manually here. So the first component of the normal will be let's see, uh, v11 times v22 minus the backwards of those two. So uh, v12 times v21. And then the other two components are the same thing just with, uh, I think that it's gonna be the two, zero, zero, two. And the last one will be zero, one, one, zero. One, that should be right. If not, we'll figure it out pretty quick. <laughs> so um, yeah, this will define normal, 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 and that will be output automatically. That's good. So now we now if we call that function, so what we'll do we'll, we'll define double normal size three, and now we'll call that function. We'll say get normal, and then we'll pass in the three points. Now the points are going to be hard to, to define because they're going to be, you know, inside the triangle array, in the node array. So we'll have to look through each triangle, find the zeroth node, and then pass, you know, those points as the first coordinate, and then we'll pass the vertex one coordinate as the second parameter, and then the third vertex as the third parameter. Uh, so it, not too easy, but I guess it'll be um, nodes, triangles, i, and then we'll do zero for the first one. Yeah, then we'll do the same thing 
the other two. I always do that. This will be second and first component. And we'll also have to pass in the normal array. So we'll just pass in normal. That will give us basically the normal of each triangle. So for the first one, it'll be this normal, then it will be this normal, then it will be you know, this normal, then it will be this normal. It'll go through the whole um, house here and give us all the normals one by one. Now we can print out the actual, um, these two lines, I guess. So we'll say f print f into f. We'll print out um, what? Face it normal percent f percent f percent f because we're going to pass in three values and we will pass in uh, normal zero, normal one, normal two, and now we'll print out um, this thing here outer loop. So we'll do uh, oh, we forgot a new line my b. So uh, tab, outer loop, new line. We'll print out at the end, we'll put end loop. And now inside that, between those two, if you look back at the wiki, we have to print out these three things, three, three vertices. Pretty easy. So we'll say um, for int j equals zero, j less than three, j plus plus. Obviously you don't have to loop through this, you can just do you know, them all you know, one by one, but we'll, do, we'll loop through it. We'll f print f, two tabs, the word vertex, then percent f, percent f, percent f, new line. And now we've put in the, the, the three um, coordinates of each vertex in the triangle. Not too hard, we'll, I guess we'll say nodes, triangles, I, J, and then zero, or hold on. Yeah, I, J, zero. We'll copy this one. Let me fix that again, as usual. So this will give us the X coordinate. This one will give us the Y coordinate. This one will give us the Z coordinate. Yep, and uh, we'll wrap up that loop. That should print out everything here. I think that's it, I think we're done. So if we compile this, hey, wow, no errors. That's ridiculous. And now um, we can run a.out. That should give us an STL. Let's open the STL. Here's the STL. It looks reasonable. Uh, hold on. The last one looks like it's broken. Um, let me take a look real quick. Okay, oops. Yeah, might be. So basically what I did was I forgot to put in two of the triangles. <laughs> so I, I didn't put in these, these two bottom triangles here. So 0, 3, 2 and 0, 2, 1. So we'll put those in. Zero, three, two. Zero, two, one. Right? Yeah. Now if I recompile that. Now I should have all 14. Yeah, all 14. And they point down, good. So now I have a, um, a pretty large file. It's uh, 2.4K just for this stupid little house. But we have an STL file. And just to prove to you that it's real, let's open up a STL viewer. So we'll drag in our STL. There you go, here's our STL. We coded this whole thing from scratch. Not hard. It took a while, it's been like, you know, 20 minutes, but that was me talking for a good point, um, a good part of it, so. But yeah, there you go, there's our house in a STL format. Not hard at all. 
Um, so in the next video, I wanted to do a binary SDL. So convert this to um, sort of the more efficient number-based encoding, and then also make a little bit of a, of a viewer so we can see this without having to use some online tool like this one. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, um, leave a like and uh, have a good day.